The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone, and uh, welcome to our 30-minute webinar today. Um, I'm really excited to be uh, running this webinar for you, as uh, I believe we've actually got a really compelling proposition for organizations that are, are looking at investing in, in IBM BPM, or even those who have already invested and want to accelerate delivery of their next project. Um, so uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name's Russ Borum. Um, I work with T-Impact Limited. I'm one of the uh, BPM client managers for our financial uh, and banking portfolio. Uh, I'm joined today by my colleague, Nina Bafka, uh, our marketing executive. Um, so before we get started, um, just a very quick bit of etiquette. Um, the format of the webinar today will comprise uh, some PowerPoint slides, followed by a high-level run-through of the accelerator itself. Uh, and then, of course, you know, we're keen to make this a valuable uh, and interactive session. So we've built some um, time in for questions and answers at the end of the webinar. So please feel free to post any questions that you have. Uh, and my colleague Nina will be picking those up as we go. However, for the sake of continuity, um, everybody is on mute. So um, otherwise, I'm afraid we'll simply run out of time. After the webinar, we will circulate a copy of the slides for your reference. Um, any questions that we aren't able to answer today, uh, we will take offline and ensure that we post a response quickly. So, what is Journey Accelerator? Well, speaking with clients, we're seeing that the need to actually develop solutions that support bespoke requirements and multiple products and business flexibilities is driving the use of, of business process management to design and deliver these operational requirements. And most companies are keen to realize the benefits of, uh, that are offered by BPM, but struggle to build complex solutions from scratch. And um, you know, organizations have a choice between developing a solution in-house and configuring an off-the-shelf solution. Now, I'm looking at the attendee list here, and I recognize a lot of names today. Uh, and you'll know from your own experience that designing and building a BPM solution that delivers sustainable business benefit can take many iterations and several man years of effort to complete. With Journey Accelerator, organizations can now accelerate delivery of internal BPM builds and de-risk the option of designing an in-house BPM solution from scratch. Journey Accelerator uh, will provide a core framework allowing you to exploit the existing investment in IBM BPM and focus on the business requirement rather than the basics of developing an application. So, so what this really means is that teams looking to deploy BPM can bring their project plan forward six months and, and have a razor sharp focus on valuable activities whilst maintaining an end-to-end -end view of what they're trying to achieve. And this is one of the key tenets of process excellence. And unfortunately, it's often forgotten in the heart of developing solutions. But let's take a second just to understand you know, why Accelerator is important. Because um, you know, delivering BPM projects is, is a delicate balance of cost and risk and value. Uh, and it can be difficult to balance these three dependencies within BPM projects. But you know, we know that the rewards make it worthwhile. So uh, accelerators can play a huge role here wherever you are on the BPM journey. You know, not only in accelerating delivery of BPM projects and related business benefit, but also in helping the business to close existing skills gaps by offering a ready-made solution that has been built by a team of experts with experience gained on a wide array of projects and quite normally over a number of years. So let me give you three very quick examples of um, benefits that, that can be offered by accelerators. Um, you know, the first one I, I, I would say is reduced costs. You know, when we talk about reducing costs, um, you know, we can talk about the obvious project costs. You know, we, you know, we estimate it would take a team of four full-time senior BPM developers about three months to build a comparative solution to Journey Accelerator. Um, you know, project teams are going to see an increase in productivity. You know, that's, that stuff's really important for finalizing your business case. Uh, and it will give you that rock-hard ROI. But longer term, you'll see as much benefit, if not more benefit, from actually designing and building a solution that maximizes reuse. Uh, and one of the things that I love about Journey Accelerator is that it offers a repository of, of ready-to-go components that can be reused many times across the business for different problems, like you know, the user interfaces and technical services, credit control, 
you know, all of these things um, help to de-risk uh, de and accelerate delivery of not only the first project, but subsequent projects as well. So, you know, we've got reduced risk here, uh, you know, and we've been very fortunate as an organization to uh, have worked with some of the leading UK institutions across banking and financial services, retail, telco, pharma, uh, and this has given our team experience working across uh, a, wide, a really wide array of projects over a number of years. Uh, and that collective knowledge has helped to build Journey Accelerator with industry best practice in mind uh, and can really de-risk delivery of complex bespoke in-house solutions. But uh, I think my, my number one um, added value here really is the value that you get from accelerating delivery. You know, it, it's not exactly a secret that line of business today is under extreme pressure to deliver value quickly. Uh, and the whole expectation of being able to deliver jam today uh, is one of the key drivers for using accelerators. So in the context of Journey Accelerator itself and the customer contact environment, we believe that we're able to deliver a 10% increase in first time resolution, a 9% decrease in average handling time, and about a 20% reduction in HR and training costs. And these benefits can make a huge difference to a business, especially contact centers that are handling a large volume of customer calls. But what does it actually deliver? So, you know, we've used a process-driven architecture that can support multiple variances. So, for example, multiple products, local or regional nuances. Uh, and this means that you can build once and deploy many times. So, reducing cost, rework, and waste. Uh, and we're currently leading a program of work with one of the leading UK banks that's adopted this philosophy. And uh, they, they use the analogy of a BPM cake. So, uh, they have standardized BPM solution, uh, and each country that they then deliver the solution to has its own layer of icing over the cake. And, and this is the variations to support local process nuances, technology, and services. And what we found was that 80% of the solution was completely reused between countries. Uh, and that led to um, up to a 70% reduction in subsequent project costs for each additional project that you roll out to. So, that's, that's what we mean by the BPM core, uh, and the BPM layer really, you know, Journey Accelerator provides a number of core components over and above the standard IBM BPM toolkit, and that includes things like call center, process flow, um, your application data dictionary for core data tracking, um, process control variables for describing how the process actually behaves, uh, the dashboards for performance monitoring and management, uh, and technical services for transaction processing. So. Um, we'll go into those in a little more, bit more detail shortly. So um, before I, I actually fire up Journey Accelerator and give you the whistle-stop tour, I thought it would be useful to provide a quick history of how Journey, Acceler Journey Accelerator actually came to be. So unlike a lot of accelerators that I've seen on the market, Journey Accelerator was actually born out of a, a process redefin redefinition exercise that we did with a, a leading triple play provider in the UK. And uh, during our work, we were given access to over 14 months of real call data. Uh, and we're lucky enough to work with agents actually on the ground to really understand what was actually happening in the business. Uh, and what we found was interesting. You know, we saw that customers will typically call into contact centers when they have two or more issues that they want to resolve. But we also saw that business performance metrics were driving inappropriate behavior. So, you know, the business was so worried about average handling time that when agents started to approach their handling time limit, they would actually either bounce customers off to other agents, so the time would just reset, uh, or in some instances, we actually saw agents completely dropping customers on purpose, which led to a huge rise in customers calling back to resolve, um, you know, their second or third issues. Um, so, so they were absolutely killing their business metrics on that. And, you know, they, they were just a couple of the issues that we set out to resolve with Journey Accelerator. So I'm just going to switch across now to um, the process portal. So, so once we've um, logged into um, IBM BPM, hopefully you can now all see um, the, uh, the, the agent dashboard in front of me. Um, so what, when we actually go through and when we've logged into IBM BPM, the agents are greeted with um, the agent dashboard, which gives them um, an overview of um, their, their actual performance in real time. So on this first screen, we can see that the agent dashboard 
um, is providing um, frontline representatives with a real-time performance overview. Um, and, and it's worth mentioning that all of the screens that you're about to see were created by T-Impact and aren't actually part of a standard IBM BPM capability. So um, we can see here that, that users can monitor their own performance, um, but also don't forget that IBM BPM provides um, both the process and the team performance management information uh, out of the box. Um, so you know, senior management can understand what's going on at a higher level um, in near real time, and, and they can really get a view of uh, the processes that are going through the flow. Um, and at the bottom of the screen, you can see that there's some service info and news feeds, and, and these are process agnostic call features, but they provide quite powerful uh, abilities to broadcast information to teams. Um, so, and you can see there there's um, things here about you know uh, uh, descriptions for network issues, or, or it could be that there's some technical services or promotions that we're trying to run. So, if we move past the first screen, so we've what we've used here is a, a four-step process to orchestrate uh, for what we call the within call process. So um, we're not, we're, we're picking up a call, it's either come through CTI or, or IVR, um, and actually, you know, what you can see are, are four steps, um, and at the top you can see capture, understand, resolve, and confirm, and, and they're the four steps that we're using in the process flow um, to resolve this call. Underneath, you know, we've got some customer information, some current products, and some call history, um, and that information is, is relevant to the call agent depending on uh, what the customer's actual products are, what issues they've dealt with in the past, um, and it also gives us the ability to replay or pick up previous calls. So underneath, um, you can see that um, we have um, some drop-down boxes here to capture some, some actions. Um, so the purpose of this screen, the capture screen really, is to capture all of the reasons for the call. Um, so, and by capturing key information at the start of the call, what we're actually able to do is, is manage input quality, um, but we're actually we're using the information that's gathered to drive the rest of the call. And it, it's important to note that agents are only presented with information that's relevant to them at each point in the process. You know, and I've spoken with managers where teams are switching between 25 to 30 different applications. Um, you know, they're, they're dropping notes onto scratch pads. They're doing basically everything they can to keep up with the underlying technology. So. I'm just going to add a couple of actions here. Um, you can see that on the right-hand side we've got a call action list which is starting to be built. Uh, I'll add a, a refund request one as well because that's a, a good overview of credit control. So we, we've got a couple of actions here. You can see on the right-hand side we've got average handling time metrics. So um, one of the things that we've tried to do is eliminate um, the point where agents are bouncing calls off to other agents. So. Um, by actually breaking up the actions into individual components, we can allocate a certain amount of time to each action, um, and that means that even if an agent overruns on one particular um, action or, or resolving an action, uh, they don't necessarily um, jeopardize all of their uh, KPIs. They can restart and the timer does restart. So let's just move forward with these two. So the next step is to, um, so now I've, now I've built my action list, I have the opportunity to replay my understanding to the customer. Uh, and by enforcing this type of behavior, we know that we'll generate um, great improvements around first time resolution by capturing all of the issues. So you know, we, we only added a couple of actions, but as you can see, um, Journey Accelerator is actually uh, it, it's added another action at the bottom of our list, a promotional item. Um, and that's because it has the ability to um, actually en enable dynamic real time actions within the process based on intelligence that's gathered during the call itself. I also have a, a couple of technical services here, so call out to check that the phone line's okay and that the broadband's okay, things like that that can be built in to, um, to check uh, before we get moving forwards. But, but let's start the first action. So as, as we manage and we move through the process to issue resolution, we see that Journey Accelerator's automating some of the traditional manual activities, and, and I'll show you what I mean. So here we have res uh, resolution diagnostic tool, and it's a simple yes-no sequence of events that uh, is, is going to provide uh, context-sensitive guidance um, to the agent. So, uh, you know, for example, can you see the modem lights? You know, we know that we've had a, a connection, no connection issue. Um, yes, you know, and we're just going to click yes or no as we go through some of these. And what we'll see on the right-hand side here, and, and underneath here, indeed, on the call notes, um, is that 
Journey Accelerator is starting to um, automatically capture notes and activities as we go through. So, you know, I won't read each of them out loud. I'll just start clicking yes or no. And you can you can see that it's starting to be built there. So, we come to the end of the line, and, and the solution suggests that we perform a sequence reboot. Um, and let's say that that has fixed the issue. So we can see here. Now, now we've got. Um, on the right-hand side, we can see an integrated audit trail, effectively, and that's automatically capturing activities for you know, regulatory compliance or, or uh, service level agreement adherence. These are all really important things to the business, um, but I'm, I'm often surprised how often um, these things aren't automatically captured or they aren't automatically um, registered in, in existing call handling software. Because traditionally, um, you know, we do see that Software will tell you what happens, um, you know, in terms of average duration. It will tell you how many calls you've done in, or how many actions you've done in a particular hour. But it won't actually tell you what happens during the call itself. Um, underneath here, you know, you can also see, you know, the little uh, red Pac-Man that's ticking away here. You know, that's that's the dynamic call timer, and that's providing guidance to the agent uh, and helps to drive correct behaviours. Uh, and as we said, you know, each of the actions has its own time allowance. So when we get within a 20% time threshold here, that, that uh, little guy will turn green. Uh, and that tells the agent that they're within their threshold. But actually, you know, as we move forward here, so let's say that this issue has been fixed, what we'll actually see is that um, we get presented back to the summary screen. And we have an, uh, an opportunity again to replay to the customer that we've resolved their issue. So if I just start the next action, Again, you can see the dynamic call timer has restarted, so that, that allocation of 90 seconds. Uh, it's like a, a game starting over again. You know, the agent um, then has an opportunity to, to start the next action. So the second task that we added was a refund request. And within Journey Accelerator, uh, we've built a credit control mechanism using business rules management. So uh, this component not only enforces behavior, uh, but it can also be reused across other projects. So for example, underwriting. Um, so I'll show you what I mean. So the customer requested a refund. Um, let's say that the issue um, is outstanding or fixed. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Um, the decision here is to either decline a refund because we fixed the issue, or, or perhaps or we will offer one because they're a good customer. Um, if a customer accepts, fantastic. But if they don't, um, then we have an opportunity to offer them a, a refund. Now, let's say, for example, that the agent knows this particular person, and they want to offer them um, a, a additional refund because they're a friend. You know, if we go to override that, the system automatically stops us. And, and that credit control um, procedure um, provides better control and management to the business on how agents are performing, how they're behaving, um, and ensures that you, know, you, you remain in control. They can, of course, they do have an option to request um, and escalate to managers requesting over £10. Um, and that's something that can be done with um, comms enabled business process or um, integration into Microsoft Link or, or whatever it may be. So for, for this particular action, let's say that the customer has accepted. Uh, we're going to process that. Uh, we get presented with a short summary screen to say that the customer has accepted. And we're just going to click OK. And again, we can see here the outcome has been recorded. Uh, the refund was accepted. Um, and then we move on to our next item. So finally, um, you know, just starting the next action, this is our promotional action. So uh, of course we want to make sure that we're driving revenue opportunities. You know, that, that goes without saying. So we can use either predictive analysis or we can use business rules to offer promotional items. And that will lead to uh, cross-selling and upselling of products. Um, we, we've used a fairly um, straightforward one here in terms of trying to get a customer to upgrade their, their broadband. That may well be because they've had that connection issue and they're on an old piece of kit. You know, whatever it may be, it's, um, it's completely um, parameterized to the business and, and can be uh, amended as and when is required. So now we've gone through our three actions. Uh, we're presented uh, back to the summary screen. And this really is just our final opportunity to confirm back to the customer that we've resolved all of their issues. Um, and, and on the left-hand side, we have an opportunity to capture some um, statistics for a net promoter score or a range of follow-up. We can also add new issues at any time. And, and um, you know, I think for, for the sake of this one, what we'll do is we'll close the call down and I'll show you. So the system works as a continuous loop. 
once we've completed the final action, we get presented back to the agent dashboard. Um, and for anyone that was paying attention, you know, you can see that the some of the metrics have updated in real time there. So, so that gives you an overview of um, Journey Accelerator as it stands today. Um, but I think just to end, what I would like to do is just take you back to um, the PowerPoint here, because actually, you know, what we see is that a lot of BPM projects, they do get treated largely as um, standardized workflow projects, but actually the benefits of BPM go far beyond that. So you, know, you may have seen, even in the, in the little overview that we gave there, you know, we had the opportunity to um, provide automated metrics and SLA tracking, validation of, of data, uh, integrated audit trail, managing input quality. Um, you know, there's, there's absolutely tons of, of fantastic benefits that can be designed and built into solutions if you know how. Um, and I think that's one of the things that I would get across here in terms of an accelerator is to build towards success. So I'm conscious of time. We did say we would leave some towards the end of the session for, for questions. So what I'll do is I'll just open the floor up to my colleague, Neen, here and understand what sort of questions we've got coming through. So hi, Nina, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Yeah, thanks. So, um, so just give me give me a couple of questions. What sort of things are people asking about today? Um, okay, so first question is from Andrew from Barclays, and he's asking, how long does it take to deploy? Okay, so, so okay, so, so Journey Accelerator is a a mature. I would say it's a mature BPM accelerator. So what, what that really means is that it can de be deployed onto uh, a BPM environment uh, and up and running in as little as two to three weeks. Um, there's following on from there, you know, it, a, a lot of this will come down to um, a couple of things. How, how many enhancements they want to make to their own business, um, how good the fit is out of the box, um, but also the integrations of a back end and, and I think you know a lot of people understand that that can be a large component of BPM projects. Okay. Um, then we've got another question. Um, okay. What skills are needed to implement? This is from Tammy from Balfour. Okay, um, so to actually implement Journey Accelerator. Um, yes. Okay, so that's a good question. So you'll need someone who understands how to map um, the existing process within the business um, into Journey Accelerator. Uh, you know, we obviously, as, as a, a services organization, we can provide support if required around those sorts of activities. But uh, in fairness, Journey Accelerator does provide the functionality that you've seen today um, really from deployment. So very, very early in the project, you'll have some great capability. Um, however, you know, as I said, I think depending on, on how far you want to take it, how many enhancements you want to make or is required, um, what I would suggest is that you, know, you would want uh, uh, at least a BPM business architect. Um, you would probably want um, one or two senior BPM solution designers or developers um, to help construct the remainder of the solution um, because you have, a, you have a powerful platform here. Um, but what you want to make sure is that you're you're designing the solution to get those benefits that we've just talked about, and um, to do that, really, um, you need somebody who has been there and done it and, and does understand BPM projects. Um, so I, I would suggest, as a minimum, you would have those two or three people, at, you know, in, within your project. Okay. Um, here's one more question, um, Stuart from. Bibi, can T-Impact offer system integration services? Um, we can. Um, you know, not, not all BPM projects are the same, um, so it's difficult to give a prescriptive approach to, to system integration. Um, what I would normally suggest is um, for any BPM project that you try and form a close and, and structured uh, relationship with the organization and IT to really understand what skills exist uh, and where you know, T-Impact or any system integrator could provide value, um, it's depending on, on where you see yourself using this and, and hopefully people are using a bit of um, imagination to understand that, um, you know, although it's designed around a call center environment, you could use it for sales order management or you could use it for underwriting, um, then you'll have different 
um, underlying systems and, and if you have origination systems and things then um, you, you would want somebody from the business who understands how to do that integration. Um, but certainly we can provide services um, to complement the existing teams. There's one more question. Um, Keith from RBS. If taking a less than optimum process and putting onto BPM, then how much process refinement or correction is needed before any BPM development is undertaken? Basically, do you need to have polished process before commencing use of BPM? Um, that's, a, that's a really good question, Keith, and quite topical. Um, so, uh, to answer your question, I mean, you have um, you have different levels of process mapping, and, and um, apologies if I'm telling you something you already know, um, but a lot of organizations, when they get into process improvement and process mapping, they actually map for um, describing their, their business process, and, and they're not actually at the point of automating. So what you want to be able to do is um, get out of the weeds of process map, and, and you know, typically the general rule of thumb is, you know, I think some people call it the magic seven or, or you know, some people say eight to 12 steps. And, and that's what you want to try and aim for um, when you're looking at an executable uh, business process. So um, you would need to, depending on, on what you've done in terms of mapping, you would need to try and get it into a format where you could um, actually get that uh, business process definition document. Um, ideally, you would do that in something like IBM uh, BPM Process Designer. But if you have something already mapped in uh, BPM N 2.0, so BlueWorks Live, for example, then, then that would be a relatively straightforward job to, to migrate that across. Um, I say that with a caveat of, you know, if somebody has the experience of doing that, uh, they'll be able to do it a lot faster. Um, do we have a time for another question? Uh, yeah, we've got a, a couple of minutes. So. Mm, okay. Um, Bianca from Akiva is asking, which business problems does it best solve? Um, yeah, one of the things I was concerned about today, actually, is that we've tried to cover quite a lot of information in a relatively short time. Um, yeah, I guess I would summarize it this way. Um, you know, customer care, I think we all know, is changing. Uh, you know, it certainly isn't the same that it was five years ago. Customers nowadays, they just expect more. You know, they want better care through more channels. They want it faster and, and with first-time resolution. Uh, and there's this huge economic pressure to drive down the cost of customer care by enabling self-service and, and through efficiency, so doing more with less. Um, you know, of course, the, cu the cost of customer acquisition is going up, and, and therefore customer retention is a priority. You know, and I was actually reading an interesting document yesterday. Unfortunately, research is showing that Whilst 80% of companies believe that they deliver a good or superior customer service, only 8% of customers agree, you know, and that's pretty horrendous. So, but you know, many um, customer-centric uh, processes face the same issues. You know, they result from running in isolation of a business, and and they're often non-standard and manual processes that lead to increased average handling time or poor customer experience. Um, so, you know, they're, they're the sorts of issues that you want to try and overcome, and, and you know. A lot of organizations start with visibility. So you, know, you want to try and understand where you are today and then look at how you can improve. Um, and certainly, if you're looking for uh, a customer-centric solution, then, then BPM has shown it can be incredibly powerful. Thanks, Russ. OK, um, this is the last question. Um, why get this from T-Impact <laughs> from Barclay Card? <laughs> Okay. Uh, well, fair enough. So, um, you know, Team Packs designed this accelerator in-house, so it isn't available on the open market per se. So you couldn't go and buy it from another vendor. You know, as a creators of Journey Accelerator, um, you know, we understand how to get the solution up and running as quickly as possible. Uh, but we've also designed it in such a way that you can take it off the shelf, so to speak, and, and deploy it with minimal external services. Um, so, so I would say if you're looking for um, a service or a solution to help you get your first BPM project up and running very, very quickly with minimal risk, or you're looking to accelerate delivery of your second project, um, then, um, then you know it's worth a conversation to understand how long it might take you to do this in-house. Um, not to mention, you know, the, the risk element of trying to build a, a complex solution from scratch. Okay, um, everyone else for your questions, um, we'll just pick them up and come back to you. I think. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And any questions that we weren't able to answer, I apologize. Um, I'll take those offline and, and we'll send a roundup email with those shortly. 
Okay, guys, well, thank you very, very much for joining us today. Um, I hope we were able to provide you with um, a short but succinct overview of, of what we're suggesting here. Um, any questions, please do keep them coming through, um, and look forward to speaking with you all again shortly.